For me, the one by system is the best for road bicycles. You may disagree and you have all the rights to do so. You may also stop watching this video now because you already have a strong opinion and you don't want to change it. But if you will allow me to explain what analysis I've done and what parameters I've taken into account that led me to this conclusion, maybe I can offer you a different perspective. With this new perspective, you will take the right call when it comes to one buy for road bicycles and whether you should switch it or not. I will start with this three-step analysis that I've made and it is easy for you to make it also. The first thing will be to gather the inputs for this analysis. What is your current setup? What are your normal riding conditions? How many gears do you normally use during your ride? In my case, the current setup for my road bicycle is 5034 in the front and 1132 on the back. I would say that it is a common setup that we can find in most road bicycles. I bought my bicycle like this with this configuration. No one asked me if I like it or not or if it was good for my needs. I do understand that it is a business run by the bicycle manufacturers where they are looking to keep the production costs down and increase the profit. They are doing this by using the same type of components in large quantities. Again, I do understand that, but that doesn't mean that the setup that I have or you have it on your bicycle is the one that we need. This is an important aspect to consider when choosing between sticking with 2 by or switching to 1 by. Ignore this input and most likely you will make a big mistake. In my case, where I live, it is a flat terrain and almost no hills. Most of my rides are done on this terrain. I am not using all the gears and for sure I can get rid of some gears. I know that I am not changing my gears often because as I said being almost flat there is no need to change the gears. I know for sure that I never use the smallest chain ring during my normal rides because I don't need it. I can handle the situation with only one chain ring. In your case you can start doing a similar discussion based on where you are living if it is a flat, hairy or maybe a mix of these two and how often you change the gears. Do you like to go fast, always looking to achieve top speeds, pushing hard on the pedals? Do you find yourself in a situation where you need to change to the smallest chain ring because this is the only way for you to pass a section during your ride? In this case, you might need a 2x system, although there is still something left for you to investigate before making this decision. If you like this content, subscribe to my channel. It is free for you and priceless for me. Thank you. The final input for this analysis will be the number of gears that we are using during rides. Out of my 11 speed for my 1132 cassette, I am using only a few cogs. I rarely or never use the 11th, 12th, 13th and 14th. With 15 in the front and these cogs, I will be outside of my comfort zone while riding, meaning I will have to push many watts and ride at a higher speed. Usually, I am riding on average at a speed of 30 km per hour with a constant pace and a cadence of 90 rpm. Of course, there are variations in speed and cadence, but on average, these are my numbers. What are your numbers? What is your average speed and cadence during a normal ride? To check what are your performance and what gears you need during your ride, you can use this great free online calculator. First, you make the selection that will match your setup for the chain rings, cogs and tire size. After that, all the numbers are there in front of you, ready to be analyzed. Based on my setup, 5034 and 1132, I could see that I have gears that are very close to each other and this is valid on all the 2x setups. I don't want to go into a debate where to discuss whether having gears so close is a good thing or not. This is purely a matter of taste. We are all different with different needs and different visions and that's why most of the time debates are useless. I will focus on my case and my needs and with this image in front of me it was clear that I could make the switch to one by. I am carrying gears with me all the time and I am not even using them. Why should I do that? 
But before deciding to go one by, I need to check what it will be with a one by. What are the differences or how close can I come with a one by compared with my actual two by system? The good part is that checking this is very easy to do with this calculator. Simply click on the compare button and a new setup can be made in parallel with your current setup. So I did a comparison where for the one by setup I choose a 40 teeth chain ring and for the cassette I selected a 934. Same 11 speed as my actual 2x setup, but with a different range on both sides. You will see later why I'm using these numbers in the calculator. It was no surprise to see that I could almost match the same gears and speeds with this 1x setup compared with the 2x setup. I could achieve almost the same top speed and during climbs I can achieve almost the same ratio. There will be bigger gaps between the gears and this is something that I have to accept. For me, this analysis is enough to take the decision. I will go one by. With this in mind, I start searching for new parts, a cassette and a chain ring. Regarding the chain ring, it was clear that I will go with SRAM. Why? I found that SRAM offers many one by solutions and together with the dub system, I will also solve a problem that I have. I was never happy with my Shimano button bracket. There was a noise coming whenever I was accelerating and I was sure that there was a link between the noise and the button bracket. Choosing SRAM DAB, I went for the direct mount 8 bolt system. The reason is that I can keep the spindle and the crank arms and just replace the chain ring when I desire. And to change the chain ring is important for me for when I would like to go and climb big mountains. Again, using the calculator, I could see that I could replace the 40 teeth with 34 teeth, for example, and this way I would have a better gear ratio for climbing. The chain ring is not an expensive component and changing is easy to do. On the market, there are many options for direct mount 8 ball chain rings in different configurations for offset weight and diameter. Also, I took into account the weight saving because this is the point of this series. My 2x Shimano 105 5034 weight is 750 grams and the front derailleur weight is 111 grams. I will replace all of this with a new SRAM Force 1x tab system with a 40 teeth chain ring. The weight in total is 600 grams. From this total, the chain ring itself is just 120 grams. Doing the math, it is easy to see that I will save weight and I will also have the flexibility to use the right chain ring size based on my need. For the cassette, I replaced my Shimano 105 11 speed 1132 with an E13 cassette 11 speed 934 teeth. The main reason is that I can keep my actual rear derailleur and I will improve both sides of the gear ratio lower and higher. I can match the same top speed in this configuration using the smallest cog with 9 teeth. This cassette is also lighter compared with the Shimano 105 1132. It is not much, but for me it is important. So I did it. Instead of a 2x, now I have a 1x system on my road bicycle. On paper, I don't have regrets. The numbers are not lying. I also have the flexibility to make a small change to this setup by replacing the chain ring when I decide to go climbing. I like it also how it looks like, cleaner and simpler. Now I go riding.